Hello, my amazing artists. Today we are gonna be using our clay to make animals. Now you have the choice to make whatever animal you would like, but we are all gonna be using the same material and we're gonna use some of the same strategies to build our animal. So we have one piece of clay, but we're gonna need quite a few pieces to make the different body parts. Now, as we're working with clay, there are a couple different techniques that we can use to build with clay. We can make slabs, we can make coils, and we can make spheres. We're gonna learn how to make each of those things first. So I'm gonna take my clay and I'm gonna twist it between my two hands to rip off a piece. This first piece I am going to put between my two hands to make a sphere. So I'm gonna put it between my two hands and I'm gonna be moving my hand in a circular motion to roll a sphere. As I'm moving my hand, I am pressing down with my top hand to squish the clay. Not so much that I'm squishing it flat, but just enough so that it's starting to roll underneath my hand and make a sphere. You can see that my clay is already starting to get a little round. I can keep rolling it until it's a nice sphere. Then I can set that aside. So that's form number one. Form number two that we can make is called a coil. Again, I'm gonna be squishing the clay between my two hands and rolling it, but this time my hands are gonna go back and forth, back and forth. And I'm trying to apply an even amount of pressure as I do that so that my coil becomes the same level of squished all the way around. Once I've got a good start to my coil, I might lay my coil down on the table and I'm gonna roll forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards with my hand, not pressing so hard that my coil gets squished flat, but just enough so that the clay rolls underneath my hand. And I can keep going and as I roll, as I press down with my hand on my clay, that coil is gonna get round and it's gonna get longer. As it's getting round and longer, it's also getting skinnier. So the di diameter, the amount around that it is, is getting less. That is another form that we can make. So now we've got two forms. There's one more form that we can make, and that is a slab. Now, if we were in the art room together, we could use things like rolling pins to help us make our slabs. Because we don't have rolling pins, we are gonna use our hands. We're gonna put the clay in between our two hands again, but instead of rolling our hand, moving it in a circular or back and forth motion, we're gonna kind of play patty cake, kind of like we were giving it a high five. So I'm gonna clap my hands together, and as I'm doing that, I'm squishing in on my palms, squishing them together and squishing the clay flat. You can see that my clay is getting bigger, it's getting flatter, and it's becoming a shape. Now, again, if we were in the art room, we'd be able to use all sorts of cool shaping tools to shape our clay into different forms. Unfortunately, we're not able to share tools today, but we have some cool things that we can use our hands and fingers to help us mold and shape our clay into the form of the animal that we want to create. Most of our animals are gonna have a body. They're gonna have a head, they are gonna have some appendages, whether that's arms and legs, whether that's four legs, whether they have wings, all sorts of different features. We can build any feature that our animal has using those three techniques. So let's say I am creating a dog. Dogs are one of my favorite animals. Maybe that's the animal I'm gonna create. You might create a different animal. I'm gonna need a bigger chunk for my dog's body. I think I'm actually gonna use just a little bit more clay. So I'm gonna kind of squish it in between my hands to combine it, and then I'm gonna roll my hands in a circular motion to make a nice big sphere. I'm pressing down with my hand on my clay. I'm moving my hand in a circular motion to roll a sphere. I can press and pull with my fingers against the clay to smooth out any cracks that I have. If you are in a space where you can wet your fingers with maybe a little bit of water or maybe a little bit of saliva, a little bit of spit, that is another good technique to use to help shape our clay and add moisture to it so it doesn't get dried out. All right, so let's say that that is the sphere that I wanna use for my dog's body. I'm gonna kind of squish it against the table. Now, one of the things that clay does not like to do is it doesn't really like to stand up straight and tall. You can see that that coil is starting to lean like the Tower of Pisa, it wouldn't stay like that. So if I'm thinking about my dog's legs, I'm gonna make them a little bit smaller. So I'm going to tear my coil into some smaller pieces. And I might roll these a little bit skinnier. I can kind of pinch them to shape them into a different way. Maybe I press it down against the table so it's wider on the bottom. And then to attach it to the body, normally in the art room we'd use the four S's. Today though, we're just gonna use sticking and smoothing since we don't have our tools to do the scoring and the slipping. So there's one leg for my dog. I'm gonna attach a second leg. Again, I'm pulling and pressing on the clay and blending it in with my finger, smoothing it so that it attaches nicely. All right, so I've got two legs for my dog. My dog is kind of chunky. It's gonna be a cartoon dog and that's okay. 
and I'm going to use the rest of, or a good portion of the clay that I have left to make some back legs. I can do the coil technique, moving my hands backwards and forwards, pressing in with my hands, not so much that my coil becomes a slab, but just enough so that's rolling between my hands. One awesome thing that dogs have is a tail, so maybe this becomes the tail of my animal. Again, as I roll it on the table, I'm moving my hand forward and backwards. I'm pressing down, not so much that it squishes flat, but just enough so that it starts to skinny out. I can attach it to the back of my dog by pressing on the clay, sticking it into the other piece and smoothing it together. So there's a tail for my dog. I could add in two back legs. Again, I'm going to press to stick and then I'm gonna smooth with my finger to add in that detail. All right, now, very important, my dog needs a head. I've got the sphere that I made earlier. I'm gonna attach that on top. So I'm gonna stick it down and then I can smooth things out. I could use a pencil to help me get into those little crevices if I wanted to. Some, what are some other features that my dog might need? Those are all great ideas. I'm gonna make two itty bitty spheres to be its eyes. So I took a little tiny piece of clay, I'm putting in my hand and I'm moving my hand in a circle as I press down to roll it into a sphere. So there's one and two. I will stick those onto the face of my dog. Now he's a little silly, he's a little cartoony and that's okay. Now my dog might need a nose. I'm gonna take a little bit of the clay that I'd used before for the slab and I might roll that into a bigger sphere for my dog's nose, it's snout. I can kind of pinch it and shape it with my fingers. I add that maybe to the front of my dog. I can smooth and blend it in with my fingers as I press and pull on the clay and blend it in. And some ears, I think that would be another good feature. So I'm gonna take my slab and I can kind of shape my slab using my fingers. So I'm pinching and squeezing and getting it to the form that I want the ear to be. Kind of a teardrop shape or a seed shape. Then I'm going to stick it on down and I'm gonna smooth by pulling and blending with my finger. One second ear, we need to make it two ears because that's how many ears my dog has. But again, you can make whatever animal you would like. So think about what kind of animal you would like to make and what features your animal has. It would be a good idea to look up pictures of your animal so that you have an idea of what your animal really looks like. Now I could use my pencil to add texture. So I could poke it in, maybe make some line marks to make my dog furry. All sorts of details I could add. I could add in some pupils to my dog. Maybe I add in a nose shape by kind of drawing into the clay. Maybe I make some little tiny holes to be like where its whiskers would be. All sorts of details that I could add. Because we have made a form, we have made something that's 3D, to document your work for CISA, I would like you to take a video, which I will show you right now. Alrighty, so to present our artwork today in Seesaw, we are going to be clicking the rectangle green add response button, which will take us, take us to our tools. Now normally we select take a photo, but today our artwork is a form. So to show that form off, we are gonna select video. So you're gonna tap video, and then you're going to tap again to record while you're recording it would be awesome if you would tell me about your artwork so maybe you say my artwork is a dog and maybe you would tell me about the different textures that you use to create it the important thing with the video is that you are showing me all once of your the video size loads your you're going to hit the green when check mark done, again tap on to the cameras turn again it in. to pause they should go gray and then hit the green check And then I will come in and I will give you 